Greetings. I know exam season is around the corner and we have a lot of people that are working on their exams. Allow me to share with you just seven rules and regulations that will see you through any exam and you should ace it. And you're going to find the first one in Matthew chapter 22 and we'll look at verses 15 to verse number 22. What does it say? Think on your feet. What had happened in this case? Jesus Christ is out there. And who comes over? The disciples of the Pharisees. And this is the question that they put to him. Should we return taxes or not? And Jesus only hears this question when he is on the spot. And this is why I want to talk to you. When you walk into that exam room, you'll never know what the question will be. You are going to meet it when you are there. Think on your feet. That's why you're in an exam room to meet questions that have not been asked before. Do not panic. Relax. Relax. And number two, rule number two, you want to make sure you are original and you improvise right on the spot. Jesus had not met this question before and it had not been addressed anywhere in scripture. So he had to come up with a solution right there and improvise. And he says, bring the coin over. As the coin is brought over to him, he then goes on to regulation number three. When you have made your argument, always connect the dots. Draw the linkages. Do not leave it hanging. Jesus says, whose face is on this coin? They say, Caesar. So then he says, you return unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And unto God, what belongs to God? And he was referring to their unrepented hearts. They ought to be given to God. Jesus draws the conclusion. Many a student, they come up with a beautiful illustration, but they leave it hanging somewhere up there. Point number three, regulation number three, always draw the linkages, draw the connections. And let's move on to number four. What is rule number four? You will find it in Matthew chapter 22. The verse is 23 up to 33. This time it is the Sadducees. They come to Jesus and they say, there's a brother who is married to a wife and he dies without being blessed with children. The law of Moses says, now they go back into the Bible. They are citing scripture. So now when scripture is cited, you ought to also equally cite the same authorities that are being referenced. So Christ is going to answer from the Bible. But this is the interesting thing. They say the first one dies. Second brother marries. He dies too without children. And the list goes on and on. The scenarios are given all the way up to seven. And the question is, when these, all seven of them, make it to heaven and resurrection has come, whose wife would this woman be? The question that is being addressed is being addressed by non-believers, those who do not believe in the resurrection. And in identifying the issue that needs to be responded to, Christ isolates the crux of this question. What is the key issue in this question? It's an issue of resurrection. It's an issue of the limitations of what God can do. So Christ now identifies that particular crux and he pursues it in spite of all these other scenarios that come in. Husband one, husband two, up to husband seven. He keeps his eyes on the ball. And regulation number four. In spite of the scenarios and examples that are given, identify the crux of the question. What is the main theme? Follow that. Do not be sidestepped. Do not be sidetracked by all these other examples that are going to be given in the question. Make sure you have your eyes on the ball. And how does Christ respond? You want to take note of his response so that you know what it means to keep your eyes on the ball. He says, you don't know the scriptures or the power of God. He is not the God of the dead, but the living. So the issue is about the power of God. The issue is about the dead and the living. Heaven is a place of life, not death. If you're going to premise heaven and build it upon death, you're missing a fundamental question. So Christ goes to that issue. He doesn't respond uh, addressing himself to husband one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to seven. He doesn't even get there. So make sure you identify the theme. This is why you need to identify the key words. When you are identifying the key words, you're identifying what the question is all about. Let us move on to section number C and we want to look at just five, six, and seven. This is what number five says. Number five, 
The Pharisees have seen that the Sadducees have been silenced. And having been silenced, and their uh, disciples have been silenced too. Now they engage the services of a lawyer. And they say, go and ask him a question. He gets to Christ and he says, which one is the greatest law, the greatest commandment? And notice which one, not which ones. So the answer elicits a response that says, this one, identify one. And Christ in responding gives us a glimpse of what regulation number five is. Number five says, whenever you are responding to a restrictive question, answer broadly. Do not confine yourself because when you confine yourself, you may miss it because of the lack of precision. But answer broadly. When you answer broadly, you give yourself room to breathe. But you need to make sure you strike the balance. Do not answer broadly until you wander off the scope of the question. Remain within the scope of the question, but be broad in your response. So he is basically being asked, choose one out of ten. And Christ has to come up with a way of choosing ten and placing them within that one. And this is the interesting thing. The, the intelligent student, the perceptive student, the one who is inspired by the Holy Spirit, will be in a position to think of a way of bringing all these into that particular answer. And regulation number six, what does it say? Christ then says, after having told him, you shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind. And then he says, and the second is like unto the first. And the second is, you shall love your neighbor. Now, what is he saying here? He's drawing a comparison of a similar case. So the good student is one who is not only going to be restricted to that answer, but in being broad, they are going to look for similar cases that have happened elsewhere and draw comparisons. So when questions say compare and contrast, they are looking at, are you able to identify things that are similar? So he goes on to identify that and he says, there is another law. Having identified number one, I may as well tell you that in my reading, I have come across number two, which is just like number one. So this shows that this is a student who is well read. And at point number seven, regulation number seven, step number seven, this one you must understand. Christ then ends by these words, all the law and the prophets depend upon these two. Now, what is Christ talking to now? He's talking about a system. He's talking about a flow plan to say all oh, these are connected to these two. As you respond to your questions, you want to show that you understand the systematic flow and purpose of what you're talking about. What is its function and how does it operate? Speak to that. When you speak to that, you appear like someone who has um, a bird's eye view, someone who can give an objective assessment. So what are the seven issues that I want you to take note of as you go into your exams? You can look at them as item number one or seven to one or one to seven. Number one, think on your feet. Do not panic. Number two, be original and improvise. Number three, conclude with linkages and connect the dots. Number four, you want to make sure you identify the crux, the theme, the key elements of the question and stick to those just in case you get sidetracked. Number five, you want to make sure that you answer restrictive questions broadly. And number six, draw comparisons with similar cases. Number seven, show that you understand the systematic flaw and the purpose of the system you are addressing. Until we meet again next time, may God prosper you and make you the heads and not the tails in these exams. Go and nail them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.